She is mask today. Shit. Hey, haunties. It's me. I'm very masked today. This is a... Uh... It's not a good look. I've um been sick, pretty sick, since Sunday, but um, I'd like to think I'm better now. I didn't want to not make a haunty hour this week because I've been so good with them. I could live, you know, without having a Sunday, a Monday, or a last Sunday video, that's fine, but the haunty hours are important. So it's just a little late mask haunty hour. I'm sorry I'm a mess. <laughs> Can you believe how hairy I am? It's only been like two days since I've shaved. Like, one time when I was um, working at a job a while ago, I worked with a guy who had a beard, and he was, it was literally like, I went like two days without shaving. And like, since I'm like ethnically ambiguous, since I'm Mexican, Native American, I grow, I grow hair pretty fast. And I hate it, um, for me. But uh, he was like, dude, how long have you been growing a beard for? And I was like, I don't do that. And he was like, it takes me like two months to get that kind of beard. And I was like, this is two days. One day we'll get electrolysis. One day. Okay, so I guess the Heathers is getting a reboot. And my issue with it is it's one of those things where people are like yeah it has representation because the main characters are now queer um and my issue with this is it's not representation because what people like to do is they like to take people of color or queer people and uh put them in positions that still demonize them and the heathers is very much a great example of that because the movie itself which is iconic for its time. What they've done is they replaced the main characters with queer people, except for the girl who kills them all. So it's still a cisgendered, heterosexual white girl killing queer people. And I don't know about you, but it's kind of a mixture of demonization and like, you know, traumatic, <laughs> traumatic shit that we don't want to deal with. It's still queer people and queer people of color being murdered on camera. So it's not really groundbreaking. And what I hate is, um, one of two things are going to happen. Everyone's going to talk about it and they're going to praise it like it's some groundbreaking thing or no one's going to watch it as you shouldn't because it's not groundbreaking. And then they're going to go see what happens when we try to do representation and it's very strategic so that people can say that they've tried to do something when they haven't. And I hate when this happens because it's not authentic, it's not genuine, they're not really trying to, you know, change the way that media perceives queer people, queer people of color, and people of color in general. Um, so it's ugly, and plus the only queer Heathers that count are, you know, Raja, Carmen Carrera, Manila Luzon, and Delta Work. So, you're canceled. I've been watching a lot of early 2000s reality shows again recently, and first of all, I want to say that to Tyra Banks, I'm really upset that you did not give me a callback on my application for America's Next Top Model season 24, whatever season it is. And I, uh, it's fine, I like Naomi Campbell better anyways. I love it because, you know, that was before like reality TV was really scripted or really forced storylines on the people and tried to like manipulate people behind the scenes into doing crazy shit. That was just when people were just themselves and I've really been sitting back today and thinking to myself, like, and if you follow me on other social media, you'll know this, but I'm just like, people, three seasons worth of girls really got into that house and fought to be with Flavor Flav. And I mean, like, they literally, they were sleeping with him, they were making out with him, and they really wanted to be with him. And I just really think to myself, like, like, wow, like, that really happened. And I mean, I guess I'm okay with it because it brought New York and Hottie out and those two are so iconic and I mean I love them and I am very happy with how New York has managed to stay relevant all these years and like still make money off that shit and it's like go you but do you ever just think about that like they really fought for Flav of Flav girl <laughs> really really you know what my favorite part of depression is? You know when you really start to like doubt yourself? Isn't that just like so great? Like, 
Maybe that's because I have OCD too, so I have to do things multiple times depending on like my stress levels and etc. Don't you just love that? What are your favorite readings to do when you're really doubting yourself? Let me know. I'm interested. Like tarot readings, I mean. My song of the week is, um, I really don't know how to pronounce this name, so bear with me. Trisomy? 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 Um, whatever. Trisomy 21, the last song. There's a really iconic video of, like, vintage goth club dancing. It has my favorite gif of these girls dancing, and I'm obsessed with it, but that song is really good. Um, and you should go listen to it. I'll leave the link below. My product of the week is NyQuil. Knock yourself out. My tarot card of the week is the Ten of Swords reversed. Um, this one's going to be really short and simple to explain. It's the defiance of defeat. When the Ten of Swords is upright, all bad things that could possibly happen to you have happened. And it's time to just like surrender to defeat. This is the defiance of defeat. This says, you know, like no matter what has happened so far, just to keep trekking forward and moving forward. Um, because through you pushing, you're going to get to a new point, a new positive place, uh, a new positive area of your life. Does that make sense? Um, so obviously the retrograde's been happening. It's almost over. Shitty things have probably happened, but keep pushing forward because it will lead you to where you're supposed to be and it's a better place to be. As always, if you want a full in-depth reading, you can get them on my Etsy, House of Pop Goth, like H-A-U-S. All of my haunties are in the House of Pop Goth. I will be there. In the comments below, let me know your favorite early 2000s reality show and who your favorite character was. And if you noticed how certain characters were to be edited as the bitch, um, because it's really funny for me to watch it now and see like these characters that truly weren't the bitch but were truly out to win being edited to be these monsters and then you watch it again and you're like, but they weren't. You know what I mean? I will see you in my next video, which may be Sunday, it may be Monday, but depending on how my depression levels get, we'll for sure have one on Wednesday. Um, and I won't be masked then. Bye, haunties.